Hey guys, and welcome to part three of how to paint a Blight King. So this week we're going to be looking at the armor. So we've got uh, a few pieces, the shoulder pad there, <clears throat> the um, that forearm greave or whatever it's called, uh, the leg pieces, the knees. So we've got a few things that we've got to uh, sort out. So today we're looking at the colors. We've got, um, like I showed before, We've got the blue, the turquoise, we have the kraken skin, a little bit of white there, and some gray to control saturation. So very similar to the way we've done the, the skin, we're going to be building up the color from a dark tone to light um, and adding gray in to help uh, control the, the saturation. So we're going from blue to green, basically. Um, and then hopefully, if that all goes well, we'll be then utilizing some of our... Um, shade colors or inks to help uh, stain the uh, the armor and give you some variety. And that will also tie in with the skin so that we have similar colors running through um, both the skin and the armor together so it unifies it. So we have all that in the skin as you can see, all these magentas and purples and yellows. And we want to bring a little bit of that over into the armor. We don't want to keep them like totally separate from one another. And um, because there is a little bit of grey in the, um, the skin, we're using the same grey. So if you're following along with this and you've done the skin on your model in a similar way that what I've done here, then you want to probably add a little bit of that in um, to, to your armor colour just to, just to tie it together. So we're going for a little bit of a desaturated look, I guess, and so that the the saturated areas of a more vibrant color will come through with the glazing, which will intensify saturation and give you little points of, uh, of interest across the model. And these are in these sort of, um, you know, wounds and, and little, little sort of marks and scars on the armor that will, that will just make them pop and, and stand out against that slightly desaturated background. Um, and so we're going to see some, some nice things happening. Um, we're not going to be doing a lot of the, uh, the tarnishing and, and sort of dribbly bits, you know, Nurgle's, Nurgle's fun bits. Uh, we're not going to be adding those in uh, just yet. We're going to leave those for a later stage, like with the skin, and then we'll do that all together and tie it all in to, to really make the, the final look uh, really sell. So I think that's where we're going to begin. So grab your model, uh, get your palette ready and your brush, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so we have our colors on the palette in a nice little line there. And we're gonna be doing what we've done before and we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of a gradient to see the colors and how they blend um, so we can learn about how to um, mix. Um, so let's start off, we're just gonna use a big brush here and start moving it across. So we've got our dark blue. We're not gonna start from quite as dark as this. We're gonna, we're gonna build up a little bit more um, into sort of a dark mid-tone. So we don't want quite as deep a color. Um, it's gonna be too stark a contrast. And we can, as I said, we can always add, you know, deeper blues and saturation with our, with our shade tones. So we're gonna mix a bit of this across with a little bit of this, and we're gonna to come to a mid-color there and then we're gonna add some gray in. Okay, so we just keep adding until we find a deep tone that we like. Um, we might even not worry about the, the turquoise yet. We might just start with the blue and a little bit of the gray. So I think somewhere here is probably about right. We still wanna see that blue. So we might just mix a little bit more of that across. Yeah, this is looking kind of cool. So we're gonna be probably starting with there, but just to show you what that next tone might look like. We'll just bring a little bit of this turquoise across and we can start to see, and we can add a little bit of gray into this as well. So we can see that sort of gradient beginning. So we're going from this sort of desaturated color, then we're adding this gray in to help control. And it's also with this particular warm gray, sort of adding a little bit of uh, green in there as well. Um, by that, I mean like a, not a blue green, but a, but a green green because there's yellow in this. So it's gonna slowly change the color, which is cool. That's gonna keep it in line with, with how our flesh tones are going and, and really work for us. So I think this is sort of where we're gonna begin. So now, once you've got that set up, then we're gonna use a, a slightly smaller brush, maybe a one or something like that. Add a little bit of water with your paint, one or two drops, just to keep it diluted. We don't want this too, too thick. Okay, and we're gonna test this out and see the type of color that it that brings to this. So we'll just start on the shoulder pad here. So just paint a few strokes and take a look at it. Yeah, it's looking not too bad. We might even water it down even a little bit more. 
keep it quite thin. And that way we can utilize a little bit of the xenothal that we have already on, on the model to help add some natural light and save us the trouble. So you can go into all these little pock marks and so on across the model, that's totally fine. So I think this is a pretty good base. And it's gonna stand as a nice contrast to the yellows and the oranges that are in the skin. So I'm gonna go through and do all that right now across the armor and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's have a look. So in the end, I ended up doing uh, two uh, coats, so two thin coats on this one, and we added a little bit more of the uh, the blue into that mix. So uh, wait, we'll get it in focus. So here was a little more gray, and here a little more blue. So I just added a touch more blue to that uh, than gray, just to give it a little more deeper blue color. But it's still desaturated compared to the the standard blue there. So two coats, and we end up with this slightly desaturated blue, nice and dark and ready for us to start blending up to a, a bright green on the edges. So now we want to bring in some of this turquoise. So uh, let's let's just establish that color again, just over here where we can see it. So we'll bring it across here. We're going to add a little bit of that gray in and give us that dark tone that we had. Okay, somewhere in this region. And now we're going to start adding a little bit of this turquoise here and building up a um, the next step. So we're probably going to go probably about four steps here. So this is like a nice desaturated uh, turquoise. And so we'll start with that. Twirl your brush, get a nice tip. And now we're going to start to build up some of this color. So we're going to just come in and in sort of, I guess, maybe streaky motions, we're gonna start going down like that and creating a little bit of a, um, a texture across this, because I think that'd be nice. So we wanna, we wanna just leave a little bit of the blue uh, at the base of, of this armor and have the, have the gradient go up to the top. So the light's coming from the top and we've got the darker tone from the bottom. So we're probably gonna leave a little bit of the, um, this area here, this dark blue, and we'll have a little line edge highlight there, but we're just gonna be streaking this down in little feathering motions and building up the color, much the same way that we did the skin where we're building up some tones so that when we do some glazing, we can see those glazes work across the surface. And so we're also starting to build up that sort of grimy texture as well. So it's not just the drips that we're gonna add, they're gonna add that sort of uh, grit and grime, it's also in, in the brush marks themselves. And so we just we just start working across the surface, leaving those little areas there where it's shadowed, okay? And 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 obviously inside of the the pock marks we don't do, and we just build this down. And we're coming down to the bottom here, so we just build that in, imagining the light hitting the top, and just leaving this sort of subtle bluish area here, so not going all the way to the end, and just keep building that up until you see a nice intensity of color. Okay, and it's almost cross hatching as well. So is that in focus? There we go. So some areas will be more of that color and some will be less. And it's, it's really an aesthetic decision for you, how you want that to be. And we want to come in with the edge of the brush and just line edge. You can go this way where you tip the model to the side and use the side of the brush and run it along if you want to do like a nice clean edge like that. But with this, I like to sort of just use the point and just very gently caress the edge and allow that wet paint just to bleed off and create a slightly, um, it's still gonna be a, a fine line, but a slightly messier line, just in these early stages, just to, just to keep with that sort of, um, I guess, you know, inconsistency across the surface. So we're seeing little blotches of dark and light tone, and we're just gonna do that. So we're gonna come through Get that in focus. So you can start to see there and you can vary it up. So if you start to like, if you want, ooh, I like the idea of a little bit of a, a bigger shadow behind, then fantastic. Leave a bit more of that blue color and we can further deepen that with some, with some glazing as well. Get a little bit of highlight. So if you wanted to, let's say, shadow uh, one area, you'd only highlight around these sort of little glints here of light. You can actually see uh, my spotlight is actually hitting the edges there. You can see where the light and dark is. The light is uh, on the bottom lip of those of those holes and the dark is, is in the centers. So um, 
that's giving you already direction as to where the, the shadow should be and where the light should be. So I'm going to come through and do all this now and get it to this kind of streaky uh, pattern here. And then um, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so let's take a look. So the first layer is done. I also did the helmet and I realized I hadn't actually painted that. So I got that up to the same st standard as well. So now we can see, if we have a look at the, the shoulder pad there, you can see that beginning of that shadow and those streaky patterns. Same for the, the legs there. You can see the lighter color on top, the darker color underneath where I've just left it. Okay, so it's starting to build up that nice little streak pattern. And that's just helping to give that sense of texture and grime. Um, and we can further, you know, refine these lines as we go. But that's a really nice start just to begin. So now we're going to move on to the next one, which is going to be more of this turquoise color. Okay, um, mixed a little bit of that gray mixed in. We don't want to be too heavily saturated here. We still want to keep... Um, that same off color going. But now we're moving into a slightly deeper color here, maybe a little bit more of it. Um, and then after this, we're probably gonna move into the greens. So this will be, I guess, our mid-tone, if you wanna call it that. A little bit of water mixed in. Twirl your brush, get a nice point. And now we're doing the same process, but we're gonna be leaving a little bit more of this so we start to get that gradient going from bottom to top. So we just start with the top and I guess work our way down until we're happy with it. So we do our little line edge highlight across the, the top here. Still using the same one brush. Probably after this we'll move into um, a more fine detail brush. But for now this should be fine. If you're feeling not as confident then sure go down to a zero or something like that so that you can do this technique. But um, a, one, a one should be okay as long as you've got the point on it. It's not too, um, too old a brush. And now we're just going to be just streaking that on, paying attention to these little circles that we're just going to highlight the bottoms of, just like we saw with the, the light that was hitting it. All of the light is hitting the bottom of these little pop marks. And maybe these things, they'll probably end up a different color, but for now we'll just highlight them come across the edges and highlight all of those little edges there. Okay. And we'll start bringing a little bit more light into this. When it first goes on, it's gonna be a little bit brighter than what it'll end up with once it dries. And so we're just sort of doing this kind of pattern across here, building the light into the model, leaving the crevices, leaving the areas that we feel we wanna see some shadows, highlighting up. We can still be relatively bold with this. We don't have to be um, too pedantic about it. We can just continually do this because we're going to be adding a bit of green in and other colors. So we can always, um, you know, go even lighter if we want to, or we can bring back in some darks with those glazes. So it's not too important how heavy you do this. Just enough so that we see a difference in color from blue to sort of a turquoise green. And that's what we're going for. So I'm going to go through and do all that now. I'll be back in a second. All right, let's have a look. So all of that mid-tone now is on. Now in this footage, as I've said many times before, I'm using an iPhone, so um, there's a lot more blue than what it would actually be. The turquoise is coming through here and we're starting to see a, um, a green to blue change. But on this footage, it looks all blue. Uh, that's not actually what's happening. So there's a, there's a little bit more of a greenish hue coming through uh, on the tops of this, which is um, creating some nice variation. Very sort of uh, nautical or like, you know, aquatic um, sort of feeling coming through. Um, and it's contrasting nicely. So that's where we're at for now. And now we want to start to add in this green. So let's grab a little bit of this crack and green here and we'll just place it on the side and blend it in. And now we don't really have to worry too much about the saturation. It's going to grab some of that from the, the color that's there. And I think that's pretty good. Uh, we might even add a little more, get this a little bit greener so that we can be close to the color. Twirl that brush, okay, to a point, and then we'll get started. So we pick up our model here, 
with this nice color and I think uh, we'll move on to now using a zero or a fine detail brush. So we definitely want to do that. So get your color on, okay. And now we're going to do even less. So we're really just looking for the raised areas, line highlights around the edges in the very tops and centers of some of these sort of brighter, brighter areas on the armor um, around these edges and around the little pock marks and so on. And we're just trying to get um, a nice contrast between this and the, and the blue. So we just get that on our, on our brush and we'll start with the line. Whoop, get it in focus. We'll start with the line highlights. So we just place that on. Okay, and we take a look at it and we see how it's going. Okay. Just get it going on there enough so that you can see what's happening. And if you need to go again, then we just do a little more on it. I want to see a little bit of that streaking. across the top there, getting some nice brights in there and just keep playing with it until you see the, the level of color that you like. But we want to see some green so that we get a little bit of uh, variation. Like I said, you're not going to be able to see this on this footage. It looks very blue, but there is um, quite a lot of green there. Um, as you can see from the color in the background, the crack and green, it's very bright um, and it is actually adding quite a lot of green to this. So we're just building that up subtly, little soft feathering touches and just highlighting all these little edges and bringing some of that bright green across the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that now and I'll come back when we're done. All right, and so now we have the first highlight on and now we're starting to see some real definition. We're getting nice lights to darks and we are actually seeing a lot more green coming through. And so the final highlight now is going to be all of the edges. So we're going to mix more of the Kraken into this. And doing so, we're also increasing saturation as well. So the brightest is going to be, you know, really making it pop. And so now we've got this sort of, I guess, lime green coming through there, minty green. And that's going to uh, really set off what's going on everywhere else. So we just twirl the brush, get our point back with our fine detail brush. And now we're just going to the very raised areas, line edge highlighting. Okay. So get that in focus, hopefully. And just very carefully, just caress that edge and start to create those highlights. And in this step, we're not going to hit too much of the armor. We're just hitting all of the edges, maybe a few little streaks down those um, pockmark holes, but we're not going to hit the main surface area. We've got that built up now. This is just for the edges. So you're just going to do all those little edges, sort of like painting a space marine. You're just doing all of the edges, but we're, we're going to allow a little tiny bit of streaking here and there just to break up the surface um, off edges. So streaking off an edge and um, I'll come back when we're done. All right, let's have a look. And there we go. That nice, line edge highlight really breaking up the surface, giving you good contrast between dark and light. And I promise you it is a lot more green in this, not blue. So it is definitely going to a, um, a turquoise or, or, or light green. And I've paid extra attention across the, the, uh, the face here. We've made sure we get some nice strong line there to, to break that up because that's going to be the focal point. So we're going to add some, some nice color into these holes to, to make that central area, the focal uh, point, and it's a bit brighter and it goes to a line across the top. And then we're highlighting across that edge and just making that, that, that helmet just a little bit brighter than everywhere else, as you can see. Um, just so it draws your eye to that top area and, and to a lesser extent this shoulder this whole area here is the shoulder pad This whole area here is is your focal area um, and then coming down into the glorious belly Which is the secondary uh, focal point or possibly 
the the biggest focus for Nurgle. Um, and so we're pretty much here. So if this was like your normal, um, you know, Blight Kings, then this would be a great place to stop for the armor. But in terms of the, the shading and highlighting, but um, we want to go just one step further because this is like a character, um, we'll say, and we want to go that one extra step. So for that, we're going to go one more highlight. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit just mostly concentrating on just the very raised areas, um, mostly focusing on um, this top area here, not so much across the legs, maybe just a little bit on the tops of the knee pads um, and across the top of the foot there. and a few little glints here and there, but um, not, not, not a heavy amount of highlighting. So we're going to use the, um, the crack in here and build it in. It's almost going to be completely crack in there. Just a little bit of that color mixed in, just like an off, an off uh, um, bright green, not too much tint, but enough just so it blends a little nicer. Maybe a little more of that in. There we go. Twirl your brush. And this green is actually, you probably have to do a couple little coats on it because um, it is quite thin. So let's see, we'll start on the face here. So, uh, is that in focus? Yep. So we're just going to just hit very subtle. Just little points. There we go. Okay, just to, just to make that central area pop a little bit more. And then we might come across um, the top here. Again, whoop, with our, uh, with our shoulder pad. very subtly bring down on the edges there just maybe at the very corners see how I'm not going across the whole highlight I'm just touching a few areas just to help make this pop a little more we might hit a few of these some of the larger the larger spots A little bit across the top there, just on edges, anywhere where the light is going to hit. So it's more of a, like a, a small dot or a small um, uh, stroke, but nothing too crazy. Not too much on the undersides of things. Paying attention to where the light's going to hit uh, as much as you can. I mean, this is kind of a combination of, uh, I guess, realism kind of painting and then also like heavy metal sort of stylization. So, you know, heavy metal painters will do line highlights all the way around and and that sort of thing. Um, and it's not realistic, but it helps you, your eye read the read the parts and the model uh, clearly. So from further back, it really reads. Do you see that? You can see that that um, that shoulder pad uh, separated from the from the uh, the skin, so that's a really important feature. So I'm going to go and just do a few of those little spots here and there across these little tops, just across maybe that top bit, the edges there, a little bit on the, on the, on here, and same for the back there, just a little tiny bit, and then we'll come back and take a look. And there we go. Just adding in that extra little bit of um, highlight on those edges, just on the corners, the very tops, and it just helps push the color. As you can see. And so yeah, he's a lot more greenish tone and green to blue in, in reality, and it's setting off nicely against the, the yellows and purples and so on that are in the in the skin. It's looking really cool. So um, now for a final step, again, you could stop right here if, if, if you'd liked, but um, it'd be nice to get a little tiny bit of the colors that are in the flesh and put that into the armor just to help tie this together. So in the next and final step, we're just going to glaze in, very softly glaze in a few of these purple magentas and yellows um, in, into some of the shadows and, and, and the raised areas just to give us some variation and help tie it in together. So um, I'll prepare the palette and I'll be back in a second. 
And so in this next step, we want to just add some color and variation into those shadows and make this a bit more interesting because the skin is so varied and so vibrant. Um, we don't want to really contrast that against a very flat and dull um, armor, even though it's cool as it is, it's a sort of a different application to what the skin is. You want to keep your model as harmonious as possible with the, with the techniques you're using. So we want to bring some of this across. If you look at any sort of master painting from like, you know, uh, a century ago or even today, or basically any master painter that will do, let's say a portrait or something like that, where you, you see someone with like, there's a lot of flesh tones there and, and a lot of, let's say, um, cloth and, and, and dress that they've got on, um, you'll notice that the colors they use in the flesh, they'll often appear uh, in, in the shadows and in areas, um, even on fabric and, and, and other types of material that are, that are in the painting. Um, you see that in, in, in many, many paintings. And it, it, it helps uh, keep it unified. Your eye finds that pleasing, um, there's lots of contrasts and little variations. Um, it, it keeps things interesting and keeps your eye on it. So we want to we want to make sure that armor has a little bit of that, and also set up for any tarnishing or stains we do later on with the with the drips and so on. So we're going to start with let's say a little bit of this red like we do on the on the flesh. Add a little bit of water to this as as this is a glaze. We're not going to add just the concentrated shade on. So this is our magenta tone just very, very softly. And we're just going to rub that in. I'm using a one brush here, so slightly larger. We don't need to be quite so fine for this, um, but we'll see how we go. We might, we might drop down if, if, it, if it feels too thick, but we'll give it a go. So we're gonna just maybe start around this area here, this nice large shoulder pad. And we're just gonna dab this in, just in around the shadows. And we'll just see how that interacts and see if we can see any colors. Like I said, um, you need tones in order to, to get color shifts. And um, this is quite dark, so I don't know how much of this is gonna show through, but I'm hoping we'll get just a little tiny bit of variation. You can throw those into those holes there and, and add a little bit of red in there, that's nice. Um, it is gonna mix with blue, so you're gonna get more of, I guess, a purplish tone uh, potentially out of this. We might even need a little bit more of that in there to see anything. Uh, we'll put it in the base of the, just in around here. And just being careful not to, um, not to leave any, any stains. So the way you get rid of stains is you wipe your brush off, keep it damp, and then you feather out the edge of that, of that, um, that shade to stop it from creating any staining. So we're just wanting, oh, it's gotta be in focus. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so you're just feathering it like that, okay? that's in focus so you can see and, and just feathering it out so that you don't get any um, uh, any any stain marks so we're just going to very gently go across and do that um, so the the red doesn't seem to be showing up too well so we'll try a little bit of the purple see if we get a better a better result from the purple um, so we'll try a little bit of that in there and you can do that just vary it up try some different colors blend them in Make sure you're feathering it out. It's a very soft, subtle glaze. Okay, yeah, that's cool. We're getting a little bit of purple in there. Okay, and the deep parts of that. And then feather it out, clean your brush off like I was showing. Make sure that's in focus. You know, got to be a good YouTuber. And uh, keep things nice and clear for you. And just get that going so that it doesn't create that stain mark. So now we're getting a little bit of purple in there, which is nice. And so we'll, we'll try um, a bit more of this red and see if we can actually get a little bit to come through. So we'll try here on the back where it's a little brighter. Let's see if we can get a little bit of that reddish tone coming in. Yeah, we're seeing it there, that's good. Uh, a little bit in here. It's pretty cool. Just again, being careful not to put that like everywhere, we're just trying to hit those little shadows. Wipe your brush off and just feather it out and soften it so we don't get too much of that uh, pooling going on. So we're just feathering that anywhere where you're seeing it pooling, just very carefully fix that up, soften it out. And then we get we get some nice nice shadows, and that's just deepening everything, enriching it. You can already see here, even though you can't actually see uh, the variations of color, um, you are seeing 
um, a deepening of color as you can see there it's a little bit deeper and darker than let's say on, on the on the foot and that's really important so I'm going to go through and do a little bit of that I'll just show you quickly the yellows so if we want to use a little bit of yellow we'll just bring that in water it down and the yellow should come up more of a green tone so you can use that across the top a little bit around some of these areas yeah that's that's becoming really bright and green so just be careful with the yellow you don't want to do too much of that but around like some key key spots would be really nice so um, possibly in some of these uh, little pustules and so on these little pock marks just a little tiny bit of yellow here and there um, just to intensify the green around some of these these areas that are that are just um, rotting away just to show that it'll be really nice around probably the face and other areas like that so I'll go through and do a little bit of a mottled uh, mix of the magenta purple and the yellow across the armor just in so the uh, red and purple in the shadows and the yellow um, in some of those like brighter spots on the edges all right I'll be back in a sec and there we are the final look of the armor well apart from all of the Nurgle's dribbly bits but uh, you can see now We've got some nice little glints of yellow green on the edges. Um, unfortunately, you really can't see the the sort of turquoise color or the deep purple, red, blue that's that's coming through in those shadows. You sort of see it. It's starting to slowly come through. You can see a little bit of it, but um, it's really rich in there. Um, you know, it's just it's just giving you a subtle nod to what's going on in the flesh and just helping tie it all together. Um, and give you those nice little little spots and then when we add um, obviously all of the drips and and so on uh, on on the on the flesh and across onto the armor it's going to tie everything together and it's going to feel really really um, you know a harmonious whole and that's really what you're looking for um, and we'll add some nice little interesting color into that um, that helmet and so on so that it really pops uh, maybe a glow maybe not I'm not quite sure yet but um, yeah you can see we've got a really great base and so now it's time to look at um, you know the the weapon the bone um, all of these secondary details need some color so in the next video we're going to go through and and tackle um, I don't know how far we'll get but we'll go through probably definitely the weapon and, and the these bone pieces that are that are on the model um, and and the little skulls and so on we'll probably hit all of the secondary areas just so we can start to see what this looks like um, at least base colors um, before we come back to do the final layers of skin because we really want to see how this thing is really looking um, before we go any further so that'll be it for this um, this part of the tutorial I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, following along with this and enjoyed um, the painting of it I hope it's worked for you um, even if you're doing a different model and you're using some of these techniques I hope they work and um, yeah if you really like this please subscribe and uh, hit that notify button and all that stuff and it really helps me out um, but otherwise I'll catch you on the next one there'll be a um, an overview at the end for the the colors and so on of this and a, and a, and a better photo of the the finished product but otherwise, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Happy hobbying, guys.